Hey guys, when I started this channel, I promised to keep it 100. Okay, well, keep it at 100 is that it's 1 a.m. and I'm sweating profusely. I can't sleep and wide away. Um, I've been without socks in for a couple days now. Um, not handling it well. <laughs> Obviously, and the whole reason I got kicked out was because the doctor that was should have been there, she ran things, wasn't, and the nurse that was there picked and choose who she would fuck with, basically. Was every time I went in, I got drug tested, but I knew other people that didn't get drug tested once. Why was it that other people could charge, but when I needed to charge and pay you half or over half of the amount, you couldn't let me do it. You yelled at me in front of people and slammed the window. And uh, when I called you a bitch because you are one, your husband came down the stairs to tell my priest on me before I threatened that he shouldn't be back there to even hear anything or be in anybody's business. Him being there, periods against HIPAA, and they're getting sued for that regardless. So I guess he should have said whatever he was going to say that day because they're being sued one way or another in civil court for speaking to me that way in front of other people and to him having access to my records and everything in between. He shouldn't have been back there, period. He had no job there. His only existence was because his wife was the one in charge, the nurse there. And sorry, I don't have any makeup. I wash it off at night. <laughs> so it came off a couple hours ago. Um, I'm really swollen for some reason. I don't know if that's some weird side effect or what, but I don't know if you can see in my hands. Like, my hands are extremely swollen. My face is swollen. Um, my face are swollen. I don't, I don't know what that is. But, I said that I was a recovering drug addict and I am. Um, I was on Suboxone. And, now I'm not. <laughs> So I'm doing it 100% without anything right now, and I'm not going to say it's easy. And there's a song about, like, kicking heroin, and uh, even though I haven't used it in a couple years, it doesn't matter. That memory and everything has been so bad the last few days. So bad. And, um, you want to rely on God and you want to pray. But when you feel like, but it not even, you feel like not even God's there for you. That's an addiction. Um, I called around, um, nobody will take you on a detox from Sparks's. She shouldn't have had me leave that day with absolutely nothing. Um, they should have at least weaned me off. And I didn't get that. Um, so I had to come off a cold turkey. And it's supposed to be the worst of the worst. And I went through um, methadone withdrawal. I went through uh, opiate. I, I guess I could say I've gone through this before too. And it's hard because it mentally fucks with you. And when something mentally eats at you and fucks with you, you can't stop thinking about it. Or you can't stop your legs from hurting. Or just your body in general from hurting. What do you do? And uh, it just so happens, like, tonight my phone's out for whatever reason. Because the internet's obviously working and so is the cable. My phone's out. And, um... Uh, my room to support is my priest, and I can't talk to him tonight. Being a drug addict 
is the thing that has probably made me the strongest person, but the thing that has ruined my life. I graduated from college, and that was a success. That's That was my success in life. <laughs> um, probably the only one I'll get. Truth be told, you know. Um, I'm almost 30 with a death sentence. I have some races to deliver. Um, I'm in stage four. So, I am writing a book about my life. It's a cautionary tale. Don't. Just don't. <laughs> if there's anything that I could advise anybody, it's just don't. <laughs> And don't get on camera with your hair being a mess because you'll keep doing one to one right now. <laughs> you get to where you just don't know what to do anymore. And when nobody or nothing will help you, you don't. What do you do? I guess I could get look for someone on the street. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I've been put in a position where I am not sure what to do. And uh, I'm gonna call, I guess, make a call tomorrow and see if there's anything that helps you. Helps you detox from this a little more pleasantly. <clears throat> it's about 54 degrees in my room and I am sweating. Um, I had the heat on, and I'm like, why is it so damn hot? And it's making me feel it, like it's not, it's freezing cold in there. Okay. <laughs> and I'm at the point where you're hungry, but you just can't eat. So thank you, you fat fucking bitch. Thank you. I'm glad that this makes you happy. This is what you get off on, or hurting people, or making their lives harder. That's okay. Because I'm not the bitch that's gonna roll over and take it. He shut up the day he walked out and was gonna say it to my priest because of what I said. He shut his fucking mouth. His fat fucking mouth. They're both fat fucking pigs that probably use all their money for food. This is the same woman that bought eight cases of baklava for me, not a month before. I had always been so nice to them. And now I wish I wish that I was a bitch. But that's not me. Wish to God it was, because there are so many people I want to be a bitch to right now. Instead, my mom seems to get it all. My priest has gotten it a couple times, you know, but we always seem to work things out a little easier. He seems to be over. I guess a couple of years too with me. I'm Orthodox, by the way, I'm not Catholic. <laughs> I was born and raised Catholic. Um, I'm just at the point where I don't know what to do. And that scares me. Because I know myself. And I know myself so well. I'm the person that's trying to commit suicide. I'm the person who's wanted things to just end so many times. I'm the one that looks at your organic step, you know, died and said, well, at least they're in a better place and they can live in peace because I know how they were living was not peaceful. There is no peace in this lifestyle. And the thing was, I wasn't part of that lifestyle anymore. I was so far away from it. And trying so hard, but it doesn't matter. And then the eBay thing happened. And <laughs> like, it was all, it was thrown on me and it was too much. Did I even tell you guys about the eBay thing? 
I spent probably five hundred dollars on eBay. And um uh, whenever I added a card pay I switched my address. <laughs> so, um everything that was supposed to go to my PO box was going to my house and I don't have a P uh mailbox here. So I had to actually go in the system and change out my address and pay to do it. So thank you, eBay. And the customers are extremely hard to work with. I'm telling them, hey, don't ship that yet. Wait. You know, and eBay's telling them, you know, because I asked her and only one listened enough to be able to tell these people. The rest wouldn't even listen. eBay's customer service sucks. But one listened to me, finally. And sent an email out to everybody with the right address. When e eBay had the right address all along. How would PayPal have the wrong one? I don't understand. But $500, probably 32, 35 items, got sent to the wrong address. And other than changing my address, there's nothing more really I could do. I tried to track packages. It just told me where they were. Okay, well, that's helpful. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know. There are just so many things right now. And I just look at my tattoos. One in which says, you know, to the old selfie tree right there. And that, that one I got when my husband passed. Love killed me slowly. That was actually before Ed Hardy. I should have pat my arm. <laughs> and, yeah, Mama's Girl Forever. This has my son's names, which I'm not going to reveal. But, this is what it's like to be a drug addict. And this is keeping it as real as it gets. As real and as raw as it gets. Before now, I've been walking from room to room just looking for anything, anything that I could do just for a minute to so just keep my mind off things. Thank God I have weed. Thank God I have weed. But I would kill somebody, I think, for like five Valiant. <laughs> it's all too much. Like, that was the thing they were supposed to teach me, and it was how to live. And I still don't know how to live clean. And they didn't even teach me how to, they, that, that's one thing, they didn't even teach me how to live clean. That was their big thing, they were going to teach me to live clean. The doctor, the very first day, um, suggested a few books, which I did read. My priest got them off Amazon and gave them to me not a few days later. They've been read. But a book can't change my life the way that maybe seeing that doctor instead of that bitchy fucking fat nurse, you know, or the fat ass counselor. Maybe she should have done more, you know, considering that was these the claims they made. I was paying $160 a week, and then it went down to $125 a week. I needed cut a $40 break until the following week that they knew I was going to show up for. There were people in the waiting room. She yelled at me, said either you can pay it all or you're not getting seen and slammed the window. And I said, that's okay, you fat fucking bitch. That's fucking okay. And uh, I, I got on the stairs and I heard her, her husband trying to run down the stairs, but considering I walked pretty slowly, um, I'd say he ran pretty fucking slowly, but he ran to tell my priest what, that I was trying to get kind of $40 break, and it's not the fact of what he would have told my priest, because there was nothing to tell, it's the fact that that's against the HIPAA law, him being there was against the HIPAA law, so what do you do? And he said, well, I'm a, I'm a plumber and blah, blah, blah. You're not anything. Your fucking fat ass sits up there all fucking day eating 
do they pay you to sit up there and get fatter? Is that their goal? Is that your goal? Like, I don't get it. And, you know, I don't throw around the word, like, fat ass. Like, it's just not my way. But these people were just... <laughs> they were... Them, them just being covered on the basis of the, the Ten Commandments. <laughs> so, they're going to die and hopefully go to hell anyways. And I'm sorry to even say hopefully, but hopefully they do. But I believe in Karma and I believe what she did to me has either already come back to her or it will. And when it does... Stupid fucking war bitch. I bet you sat and ate all that baklava by yourself. And I'm sorry this turned into like a shit talker video. I've always tried to keep it PG. But. This is what it's like. This is truly what it's like. See how my hand's swollen? This one's swollen, this one's swollen, my arms are swollen, their hair is swollen, like, oh, their hair is swollen, I don't know why. You can tell, like, look, it's, I don't know why it's all swollen, but, I got the air conditioning on, and I'm gonna sit here and pray, and I'm gonna smoke pot, and hopefully, go to sleep because I don't know what else to do. But I said I'd be real. This is keeping it real. Peace out for the night. I hope everybody is having a good night. What happens to me is not what I wish upon others. Just her specifically. <laughs> Thanks for watching.